Well, good evening once again from our NBC News headquarters here in New York. Day 1091 of the Trump administration, 293 days away from the 2020 presidential election and another history making day in Washington. This was, however, a bad night for Donald Trump. As the Speaker of the House put it earlier today, this is as serious as it gets. The House has now turned over the two articles of impeachment against Donald Trump to the U.S. Senate. House Democrats also released even more material collected from an indicted fixer for Trump's personal lawyer, Rudy Giuliani. And to be fair, this explosive material from Lev Parnas, mountains of potential evidence, has been dribbled out without fanfare or explanation from the House Democrats on the Intel Committee. And tonight, the source of that new evidence Mr. Parnas spoke exclusively with Rachel Maddow to tell his story for the first time in what we learned was only part one of their interview. What do you think is the main inaccuracy or the main lie that's being told that you feel like you can correct? That the president didn't know what was going on. Uh, president Trump knew exactly what was going on. Uh, he was aware of all of my movements. Uh, he, I wouldn't do anything without the consent of Rudy Giuliani or the president. I have no intent, I have no reason to speak to any of these officials. I mean, they have no reason to speak to me. Why would President Zelensky's inner circle or Minister of ACO for all these people or President Poroshenko meet with me? Who am I? Mm -hmm. They were told to meet with me and uh, that's the secret that they're trying to keep. I was on the ground doing their work. In terms of the president and what he has said about you, um, he said about you and Mr. Fruman, Igor Fruman, I don't know those gentlemen, I don't know about them, I don't know what they do. You're saying that was not a true statement from the president. He lied. He knew exactly who we were. He knew exactly who I was, especially because I interacted with him at a lot of events. Parnas has turned over a trove of documents and phone records and text messages and photos to the House related to the work he and Rudy were doing in Ukraine, apparently in the name of and at the direction of the White House. Last night, investigators released some of that evidence, including a note about the Ukraine president and investigations into the Bidens, a letter from Giuliani to the same president requesting a meeting and text hinting that our former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine was being surveilled, monitored. Hundreds of new pages of documents from Parnas were released just tonight. They include documents that seem to refer to efforts by Parnas and Giuliani to pressure Ukrainian President Zelensky. There's a July 3rd text in there from Parnas that reads, quote, trying to get us Mr. Z on July 26th. Giuliani responds saying, good news on Zelensky. We note that is one day after that July 25th phone call with Trump. A few months earlier, February of last year, Giuliani texts about talking to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, apparently about then ambassador to Ukraine, Marie Ivanovich. Conservative lawyer Victoria Tenzing asks him, is there absolute commitment for her to be gone this week? Giuliani replies, yes, not sure how absolute. We'll get a reading in the morning and call you. Pompeo, misspelled, is now aware of it. Talk to him him on Friday. Well, tonight, Rachel Maddow asked Parnas directly about the push to investigate Biden and what he was asked to tell Ukrainian officials. The message was it wasn't just military aid, it was all aid. Basically, the relationships would be sour, that you would, that we would stop giving him any kind of aid. That, uh, unless. Unless that there was an announcement. Made, made, well, several things. There were several demands at that point. A, the most important one was the announcement of the Biden investigation. I told him that if uh, he doesn't, the announcement was the key at that time because of the inauguration. Unless he announced an investigation into Joe Biden, no U.S. officials, particularly Vice President Mike Pence, would not come to the inauguration. Particularly Vice President Mike Pence. Zelensky was supposed to make another announcement, and that didn't happen. And that's when Bolton, Secretary Bolton, went over there, and I think he has a lot to say. I'm not going to talk on this, but I think he's a key witness to his conversation with Zelensky when he came back and why he left or got fired or however you want to look at that. But you believe he knows what the administration was pressuring Ukraine to do? Bolton, 100%. 
Today, The New York Times reports that the former national security advisor intends to reveal some of what he knows about Trump and Ukraine in his upcoming book. As all this is surfacing, the Senate now has the articles of impeachment and is about to begin the trial of Donald Trump for high crimes and misdemeanors. Speaker Pelosi formally signed the resolution to officially transmit the documents late this afternoon. That was followed by the formal ritual of the impeachment managers walking the charges against Trump over to the Senate side of the Capitol. Pelosi named those seven managers this morning. They are again. Congressman Adam Schiff, Representative Jerry Nadler, Zoa Lofgren, Hakeem Jeffries, Jason Crow, Val Demings, and Sylvia Garcia. Senators will be sworn in as jurors tomorrow by the Chief Justice. Proceedings are expected to get underway in earnest next Tuesday, January 21, same day the president is scheduled to attend the economic forum in Davos, Switzerland. And the fight over whether there will be witnesses is far from over. This morning, Republican lawmakers were once again criticizing Speaker Pelosi's decision to hold on to these articles of impeachment for almost four weeks now. She offered up this response to those who have questioned that move. Time has revealed many things. Time has been our friend in all of this because it has yielded incriminating evidence, more truth uh, into the public domain. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.